Good morning everyone, this is Stephanie from Razzle Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns and in today's video we are going to be hand carding our July Fiber of the Month. This is going to be an ombre yarn. It has purple, magenta pink, and a cream color. We're going to blend it all together going from purple to pink to the lightest and uh, it's going to be a three ply yarn. We're going to show you how we do it for the hand carding part of it. We start out with everything all together. And coffee. We start out with coffee. So, when you get your box, when you get your July fiber, you're going to take out the purple, separate it from the pink, put it all in a pile, and then you have the Angora, you have a little bit of, just a teeny bit of Gotland, it adds a little bit of darker nuance, a little bit of grays in there, it's just a little bit of variety in the colors so it's not completely white, that there's some depth. And then we have some roving. The roving is the Peruvian Highland wool. And so we divide all this up from darkest to lightest. Now you notice we didn't weigh this. So what we're going to do though is we are going to divide these into about three sections, all of it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just three different sections. Everything gets divided up into three. And what we do from there is the actual carding. Now, we will weigh this when we're ready to start spinning it. We'll weigh it out so that there's one ounce sections each. That way, each of our singles is one ounce because we're gonna spin this as consistent traditionally as possible. We don't want a yarn with a lot of lumps in it. This yarn can have some variety. It's gonna have a little bit of bumps um, just because of the roving. Another oh my goodness, just because of the, the dyed uh, pink locks, there's going to be a little bit where just using the hand carters isn't going to completely straighten it out, and we don't want to over card it. So it's going to have a little bit of variety to it, but nothing really dramatic. So we have our first section here, we divided it into three. We take this section, and we're going to start with the purples, and what we're doing is we're starting with the darkest, working our way to the lightest. We have our Howard hand carters. This is, these are the hand carters that I use for everything. So I don't, I haven't been making art yarns. I haven't been making a lot of really, uh, um, not traditional yarns, more coffee. And the situation is with these hand carters, we just, I'm right handed. So I take my left hand I hold my carter and I'm going to load on a lot of this purple I'm going to load on and this is where it gets fun so we are taking just a little bit of the purple well, a lot of the purple a little bit of I took some Gotland just now now put some of that on there and we'll do just a little bit more purple on there. We're going to leave some purple for later. Maybe I'll add a, just a teeny bit. You know what? Let's use up all the purple on this one. We're going to use up all the purple. There wasn't much left. We're going to add a teeny bit of Angora. We want that in there. Out of all the fibers, um, all the fibers I've spun with, it remains that Angora yarn is my favorite to work with, my favorite to spin, my favorite to ply, my favorite to card, just my favorite. There's something about it when it's in your hands, when you're using it, when you're making it. Very, it's very unique. It has something, it's almost like a very magical, very magical part of it. So I carded this twice. This is our purple. So for for this, done. We didn't even put any pink in here, and that's okay. Now we're going to start with the pink. So we work our way from the dark, dark purple, 
to the pink, to the white, to the off white. Now, I've made quite a few skeins of this yarn. I have a few finished skeins of this yarn. And each time I make it, it's always fun. There's always something to it. The more colors you have in your ombre yarn, um, the more complex it can get, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be complex. So I loaded this with the pink and I just card that a little bit. I'm actually going to put more on this carder because I didn't load a lot on there. I haven't done any picking of this pink. It would be a lot easier to load on this hand carter if this was picked. For example, using a triple picker, a hand picker. You can pick these locks by hand. You can pull them apart. Picking, you're just teasing apart the locks. You're, you're breaking apart the locks. So we put some Gotland in there just now. Put in some Angora in there. Your roll eggs don't have to be the same size. You don't have to worry about perfecting your roll eggs and perfecting the blending of it. There's part of this that this is really just a free way of, of making yarn. There's structure. There's some rules when we're making yarn that we don't, we don't break for this sort of yarn. But then there's other rules that are just there and I don't know. Uh, sometimes it feels like they're just there for restrictions. Making yarn for me doesn't, it's not this rigid, strict, do everything, buy the book perfectly. That, that to me is stifling. That to me is like taking away air. It makes it difficult to breathe. It makes it difficult to make the yarn. It makes it difficult to find the joy in it. It makes it difficult for a lot of things, I think, in creating yarn. So there's, there's rules. For example, when we're making this yarn, when we're trying to make a consistent yarn, we want the fibers to be spaced out. We want them to be opened up. But how you do it is flexible. This isn't the only way. This isn't the only method where you can card the fiber. You could use the picker. You could use a drum carder. You could use combs. There's just so much you could do. If you want, you could use a blending board on this. And there's just, there's such a variety of tools. And everyone has their preferences. These just happen to be these hand carders happen to be my preference. They're wonderful, wonderful carders. A friend of mine I had spoken with through text message. I was talking about some things about the the business, the yarn business, the rabbitry. And it's always we always come back to the same thing. It's always like back to basics, back to what works, back to you know keeping things simple, focusing on instead of focusing on making things as complex as possible, getting lost in all the possible details. Just um, keeping things true, keeping things clear. And when I think about this, when I think about how I hand card, and I think about how I make yarn, and the entire process of this, everyone has their own unique process, and 
hand carding. Everyone has their own unique process and how they got into fiber arts and you know it's um here's a second cut I take out second cuts and I'm going for this year and I second cuts are not my friend in this year and I feel it this is a shorter piece I feel it in my fingers But when I think about how I got started in fiber arts, it was a, it was a very long time ago. And I often get asked that question. What, what, what got you started making your own yarn? You can go to a star store and you can buy yarn. It's so much easier to buy yarn. But making yarn is real. When you have the rabbits or the animal and you raise that animal yourself, that animal, you take care of it. You make sure it's healthy, you make sure it's happy. You spend the time every single day paying attention to that animal. You teach yourself, you learn how to harvest the, the fiber from the animal. So for example, for rabbits, you learn how to harvest the wool, how to give them haircuts so that you don't destroy your relationship with your rabbit and you learn how to how to harvest their wool in a way that every time you give them a haircut it gets it just gets better and better and it's like you both know what to expect you both know um, it's I don't know there's something about all of it there's something about all of it that's just very much real Something about all of it that's just... In a world with chaos, and a lot of strange things, making yarn from scratch, making yarn from your own... A lot of second cuts here. Pick them up. Uh, making yarn from your own animals. In You know, the animal, you never, you never have to harm the animal. The animal doesn't get harmed in the process of harvesting the wool because in this method, if you do that, you've ruined, you've ruined your relationship with that animal. And the goal is to have years and years of a relationship with the animal, like a friendship with the animal, something that both are benefited from a good life for both, both the human and the animal. So when you make the yarn in a situation like that, it turns into something that's so incredibly authentic and so incredibly genuine. It's like you can hold the yarn that's hand spun you can hold the yarn when it comes from the farmer's sheep or alpaca or rabbits. And it has real life, real story to it. And there's something when you make an item, when you knit it, when you crochet it, when you weave, when you felt from the yarn that's hand spun. Very real, very different. Different than just going to um, going to a store and buying acrylic yarn. I started out with acrylic yarn. That's how I see yarn I used. And slowly I just wanted more, like many people I've talked to. You wanted real, you wanted better. There was something about it that was lifeless. And then you start learning about what happens to uh, acrylic yarn. When you wash it, strange things happen. The particles, the actual parts of the yarn, you know, they come off. Like you check your dryer, your lint trap. You have all that debris in there. Well, some of it gets out in the water too. And really, it's just like all these problems of like plastic.
And for me, that was something that just wasn't manageable. It wasn't something I wanted to participate in. I didn't want to be a part of making any more pollution. And we'll add the rest of that roving on there. And I had to. So we're down to just a little bit of Angora left after this. This has the roving, the Peruvian Highland wool roving, and Angora mixed in it. Really no pink left in this one. Nice blend here. This is nicely, nicely blended on the hand carter. This one will be fun to spin up. Sometimes you'll see hay in there, little pieces of debris. These are, these are rabbits, rabbits, rabbits that have a real rabbity life. So your fiber will have evidence of that. And that's okay. Most of it can just be picked out throughout the process. If you end up with hay in every single bit of your angora, for me, I don't like spinning that. Don't. That, that can just be composted. Last roll egg of this ounce. Sometimes when I'm hand carding, I may talk to you about I try to do 10 minutes an ounce when I'm really in the mood for uh, I've got a lot of wool to card with a lot of wool to spin up, really have to produce a lot. Not today. Today is slower. Today is just about the process and just enjoying all of it. I didn't put lotion on my hands so my angora is sticky to me. It's naturally sticky anyways. So there we go. That's what we have. It looks like it took us, it's probably going to take us uh, just under 18 minutes to do this part of the process. And we have all of our row legs, purple, pink, going all the way down to the off-white. Now we have two more ounces to spin up, and we're going to do that. Thanks for watching. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And we do have videos for members. We have an entire library of videos. So you'll find uh, more hand carding of this fiber, more conversation in the member section. And so definitely check that out because that's where, that's where we keep a ton of our videos. So enjoy.